All right, everyone, this one's called Lil Xan Deserves His Failure by Sunny V2. We got to check it out. We got to check it out. Sunny V2. Very huge creator in the, you know, documentary style content type videos. So let's check him out. Lil Xan now. Mm -hmm. You feel me? The money probably not coming in the same way. Stats trying to get. Bro. I'm experiencing the same thing, bro, with my YouTube channel because we got banned, <laughs> bro. I literally felt like crying so much recently. 30 grand out of him to finish up the balance on uh, the G-Wagon. Yeah. On the G-Wagon. And G -Wagon. he don't got 30 grand for it. 30 grand when he had... And in 22. Who knows how much money bro, at one The coolest way. podcast in the world. I would yeah, I would cut right. my arm off. Coolest podcast in the world. It was just three and a half years prior that on the very same... Guys, honestly, I haven't even, like, uh, vibed with his music heavy, guys, like, um, Lil Skies I did, we, we watched, like, a Lil Skies documentary, but not Lil Xan, not Lil Xan, guys, <laughs> um, not really, maybe listen to his, t like, main song a few, two or three times, but let's keep watching. Same podcast, Lil Xan was sitting back and bragging about owning three different Los Angeles apartments. Dang. I have the same one, 10 floors up now. Really? Yep. What? Don't you have another one on the street yep. too? And another one uh, on the same floor. Why do you have three apartments? One for my uh, parents, one for me and Eli, my hacker, and then one for uh, the hose. The hose? What the heck? Despite once being Dog. In what seemed like an unlosable situation, it was ob He's like 20 years old with three apartments. Bro. Obvious that over Lil Xan, what are you doing, man? For the long run, Lil Xan's failure was not only inevitable, but deserved. And it all began with what seemed to be a poor work ethic, dating all the way back to high school. So I failed every class up until I dropped out freshman year. I, have, I just cannot sit down for seven hours a day. Now, we shouldn't make the argument that poor grades in school automatically result in a poor work ethic over the long term. There are simply too many examples of mediocre people performing terribly in school. Facts, bro. Facts, bro. I got, I barely got through high school, man. I was about to... Uh, guys, I was about to fail, and I had to, like, go after class and finish up, like, some freaking... I couldn't pass ge geometry, bro. I was about to get held back, but I ended up passing, thankfully. But I had to do, like, extra work after school ended, bro, to finish up. Before going on to achieve greatness in a different field. However, there's a bit of a difference between finishing school with bad grades and failing every single class before dropping out in your freshman year of high school, as was the case with Lil Xan, establishing what you might call something like a predisposed naturally poor work ethic. They could never get Xan to do the shit that yeah. he actually had to do for his career. Like, I remember talking to Stat about it and he was constantly frustrated. There are going to be numerous examples throughout this video of Lil Xan often being unable to do the work whenever it was required. We already discussed him. Yeah, bro, I mean, with the name like that, you kind of can't expect him to do it, bro, because of his name, guys, like... Dropping out of school in his freshman year, but it continued... In Back when, like, the tattoos got you famous, do they still get you famous, guys? ...to the beginning of his music career, when he failed to show up to countless meetings with other big rappers who had given him an opportunity. He oh, kept missing right. the meetings. When... A Bro, I never knew Adam22 had a cat. That cat's just chilling there. I've never seen that cat on podcasts ever, bro. Less than 2,000. They, they got a cat? They got followers. a cat. followers can be noticed by an individual named DJ Fu, who wanted to take Little Xan to meet a potential manager by the name of Stat Quo, who was an old school sober rapper and manager who had worked with Eminem in the past. If it wasn't for this guy, I would literally never have been discovered, never met Stat Quo. We wouldn't be uh, doing the No Jumper Day in the Life. However, as mentioned just prior, despite this insanely big opportunity, Opportunity while still at such a small follow account, Little Xan kept missing the meetings either as a result of being disorganized or because he thought the meetings were too good to be true. It's you, LA. you can't believe everybody. Bruh. Yeah, can't trust anybody in LA, man. They'll try to snake you or something, right, guys? It's LA. It was a time when SoundCloud rappers were popping up left, right, and center to the point that it was becoming a meme. Little Peep, Little Skies, Little Pump with Gucci Gang. Is Little Pump actually an artist? Is he a rapper that is is truly worth taking seriously? The border between being a musician and being a meme. So when a song was. Dang, bro, 290 million views. A lot more views than uh, Little Skies, right, guys? It's released to Lyrical Lemonade, titled Betrayed, sung by an artist with a name as stupid as Lil Xanax. <laughs> 
exists. People had to click to see if it was a meme. <laughs> He's clowning on Lil Xan. Or not. People clicked on it because they were like, we gotta hear. Sorry, Lil Xan. Or what a little Zan sounds like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then they were actually like pleasantly surprised. The song was actually pretty decent, creating a perfect <laughs> story. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. No, the name he picked a he picked a good name, right, guys? Storm exploding its popularity. I've always said that it was just like the perfect combination of the name, the thumbnail, the title, the actual song it itself. Blows, it blows my mind, bro. And shortly thereafter, it will become the most viewed video on all of Cole Bennett's lyrical lemonade. Just how Sheesh, quickly, bro? Is it still the most viewed? It probably is, guys. You went from a total nobody to somebody that everybody knew. It's crazy. It bro. was so shocking, even bro. for me being like really close to it. However, countless comments along the lines of if he kept making music like this, he wouldn't be a joke, hint that after this project, he would be considered as somewhat of a one hit wonder. As six months later, he released his long anticipated first studio album, which would be met with many negative reviews from individuals like Anthony Fantano. We're not even at the halfway point of the year yet, and this is one of the worst things I've heard all year whilst failing to achieve a professional yeah, bro if anthony don't like it professional review anthony's like the hip-hop review guy man he's been doing it for 10 years dog higher than two out of five stars or more than five out of ten the reasoning for the poor release would be discussed by adam 22 at a later date and it was what you might call unsurprising like i remember when those album came out right and i remember having a conversation with with stat and being like what do you think of the album because it was pretty obvious that the album was bad. Zan put in like no work for the album. And I remember having that conversation with him. And if it was up to stat, Zan would have been sitting in the studio recording every night. And instead he was just doing drugs and having random ass girls come over every night. The other issue might have been that after the insane success of his single Betrayed, Lil Zan That's a cool shot though, not gonna lie. Might have been lured into a false sense of security about his future. Whoa! Look at his eye. Future and talent as an artist. <laughs> he might have felt as though he could now relax a little bit and take his foot off the gas, resulting in one incredible banger to lead the album. Bro is uh, ready to retire when uh, just one song really popped off. Other, a few others did pretty well. Um, followed by 15 other mediocre songs. This is the self-described reason behind why T-Pain's rap career eventually failed and could certainly have been the same story. T-Pain, hey, he had a one-hit wonder and then now he's a Twitch streamer, guys. And he has like kajillion subs. With Lil Xan. Everybody's like, it's downhill from here. The analogy was, if you pedal up the hill, you can coast afterwards. Right, okay. You can just stop working. You have to keep working. Um, yeah. What they, what they... Bro, is Steve-O's podcast shot in like a van or something, bro? What is going on? Don't tell you is that you coast. Totally fine. Um, there's another hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, you gotta, you gotta right. keep going. From Lil Xan. Hey, on honest perspective here, guys. Not gonna lie perspective he would state that the poor performance of the album wasn't his fault it was instead the fault of his management this is back when adam tattoo i said adam tattoo adam 22 had uh like less tattoos than he has now look at him bro the only face tattoo is that lisa one he's got a lot more now guys i dropped like maybe, maybe not a lot a lot more but he's got more a, a mixtape that got way more like positive reviews than my album and it should have been my album because my first album wasn't put together by me it was put together by my management and you know, I love my management, but I mean, they f***ed my first album completely up. I, to the point where I didn't even pick the track list or okay. like what songs were going on. It was so rushed. However, this just revealed another one of Little Xan's flaws, a lack of personal responsibility. Now, we don't know whose fault it was that the first album flopped, but in reality, it's usually a mix of both parties and is really the fault of one Facts, bro, facts. One person or another. However, Little Xan is the artist. If you release something publicly under your name and it sucks, you unfortunately have to own the failure. Plus, most of the time, even if it wasn't your fault, people like you way more. <laughs> Calls Little Xan Hip Hop's first male Karen. What? Why, they, why is everybody hating on him? He hasn't really got into it. Or when you just say, What did you do outside of the bad album? Is yeah, it? it was my fault because it displays humility and the desire to. I, I just know of one situation. I'm not going to mention it yet. Improve. Anyway, despite his first album being a bit of a flop, Lil Xan was still able to maintain his popularity after the initial blow up because when you look past the dopey personality, minor victim complex, and actually watch him on one of these podcasts, he's a surprisingly likable dude. He's not an arrogant douchebag like, for example, Lil Pump, and generally speaking, he's honest and transparent about the good and bad in his life. We talk about anything like. Exactly. You ask me anything, I'll be like, yeah, yeah I think. His stupid stories about having multiple threesomes in the space of a week make him entertaining to watch and listen to, making him somewhat of a celebrity. Hey, Sonny likes him. Pretty as opposed. I ain't gonna watch this podcast or anything, but hey, Sonny likes him. This is the early days of Sonny, guys. All the interviews with. Uh, the, the, 
Guys, the earlier videos of Sunny, he, he roasts a lot more. Little Zan always. <coughs> and he's not roasting Zan here. Like, they get as much as damn near some of my music videos. You yeah, know what like, I mean? Right now, at this moment in my career, I'm more of a celebrity than a rapper. You feel me? Because I, I, I can't leave the crib without 10 kids coming up to me right as I leave the door. However, by the same token, the amount of stories that he has, which are to some extent based on poor life decisions, openly displays his lifestyle filled with the never ending cycle of short term pleasure. And this is the problem with so many of these SoundCloud rappers. The branding by default is the glorified Dang, imagine their life, bro. It's so wild. Location of drugs, bringing hoes over to the crib every night, taking out loans to buy cars, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, expensive jewelry. They become so famous and successful while living this kind of life that they actually think that they're on the right path, when in reality, real long-term sustainable success is, at least in part, determined by your ability to avoid these temptations. The other problem with- Pretty much. But hey, why not live like you're retired because you're, you're, you're still young, right guys? But, nah, man. I, I, I feel like I already lived that, but I didn't live it to the extent they did, guys. I didn't have no money to buy anything except to feel my addiction, pretty much. That's why I got a busted laptop <laughs> uh, 15 years living this after, like, uh, I graduated high school, man kind of lifestyle is that it's usually accompanied by a multitude of poor financial decisions. In the beginning, Lil Xan seemed convinced that this wasn't who he was. Do no. you go crazy hard with expensive clothes and jewelry and ridiculous bullshit? No. Or do you... What's up, Yawa? Hold on to it. What's what's going on no, in your no, lives I'm right now? I'm not into the, you whole, got the I'm in the grills and like MCM. Like, like I have like... What's MCing, guys? I have no clue. Like a chain. I haven't heard that term being used since like freaking the 90s rap. But like it's not like so expensive. It's mm. expensive, not expensive. I'm not into the whole jewelry. However, only six months later, in a video posted to YouTube once again by No Jumper, this seemed to have changed as Lil Xan's out of control spending habits and lack of respect for valuable items was put on full display. It start by mentioning that he would take any sponsorships as he was low on cash at the time. I don't really see him uh, with the chains or anything, guys. Yeah, cream soda. You wanna sponsor me? Do it. I will take any endorsements. I'm broke. However, he'd then go on to talk about and reenact himself smashing his TV. I got so mad. I literally walked up in this the other day. I took this skateboard and I was like... Then I'm like, I'm mad. Laugh about ruining a $1,200 hoodie after leaving it on the floor. So everything's on the floor. Expensive hoodies, $1,200 from the J. And then go on to purchase two copies of the game Destiny with the goal of showing the store some love. And honestly, two copies of Destiny. Right, dude, let's play some mouse. Now you could probably make. Buying a PS4, did PS5 not come out, bro? The argument that this was just Lil Xan spending big whilst the camera was in his face. However, there was. Most likely. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that off camera, he was also quite unwise with his money. For example, in another No Jumper podcast, he'd talk about how he'd take seven of his friends to Universal Studios and pay for everyone's entry just to buy one drink before leaving. I'll take all my homies, I'll spend $700 to take seven of my friends in there. Just to get Just to get butter beer and we did. And I don't film it or nothing. In addition to this, Lil Xan would take out a loan to purchase a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, the price of which starting at- Oh, snap. At around 130,000 US dollars. I'm about to get a G-Wagon. Nice. My favorite car, dream car. Now, if we ignore the fact that Lil Xan would go into key his own car whilst angry at a later date- I Well, I remember this. I just did this to my- I remember seeing this on like a Twitter or something, bro. My car. Scratched it, keyed it up. I just bought it. Keyed all the way. Bro, what? Why? Why? Hey, it's a good way to go viral. Make himself like, you know, make him make people want to still watch his music videos so he can get some, I guess, revenue. I'm not sure who gets the revenue from the video. Probably Lil Xan, but it's probably like shared between Cole Bennett and Lil Xan for that, uh, that big song that they released together that he shot and directed. <laughs> The levels Whoa. of stupidity for chill, this Chill, bro, chill. Why are, you, why are you ruining your car, man? It's a freaking new car. I just go pretty deep. Taking out a loan to buy a car, more often. He could have he could have bought a Tesla. On. Taking out a loan to buy a luxury car just to flex on social media, double moron. Taking out a loan to buy a luxury car just to flex on social media whilst working in a creative profession where you could fall off at any moment, triple moron. Yo, welcome to Darth Vader. This is my new whip. She's like a 9 out of 10 chain, like a 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, I just want a Tesla, guys. That's, that's the biggest thing I want, a Tesla. Too bad, it's my first car. However, the stupidity of- You said the first car, man. You know what my first car was? A beat down freaking... 
2002 car, bro. His G-Wagon purchase was compounded even further when he would host a public event that would ultimately result in an extra $100,000 fine. On the 21st of December 2017, just before he'd buy the car, Lulzan would make a tweet which read as follows. If you live in the Inland Empire slash LA area and want to meet me tonight, pull up to 100 to 110 North 5th Street, Redland CA 92373, United States at 7.30. Bro, why is he dropping his location in? Now it's hard to call- oh, Guys, what is gonna go on, bro? Paul Zan, an idiot for this one. It was still early in his career and the tweet was made only four hours prior to the meeting time. He probably expected just a couple of people to show up for photos and autographs. Consider oh, okay. Considering the location- I, I thought he was just- was also on the very He's doing a meetup, guys. He's just doing a meetup. Outskirts of LA. Well, as you might guess, this oh is- Oh my god, look at all the fans, bro. ...isn't what happened. Around 2,000 people showed up, cars and streets- 2,000 people. ...were damaged, and ultimately the police would have to send in the helicopter unit before Little Zan was arrested for his own safety. I gave like a four-hour notice. I was heading to my hometown, so I tweeted uh, a location. <laughs> they were arrested for your own safety? Bro. They arrested him. And then I just expected, what, like 50 people to show up? I Dog. This is how I am. Oh, uh, I got there and this video's on YouTube. It's like 2,000 people wow. showing up. What? But I got fined because uh, a lot of damage is to cars and uh, streets. Really? Yeah, yeah nice. And FD the helicopters tracks. came out and it's like 10 grand every helicopter. It was like Project X with the. It was wind. 100K bill. What? Yeah. Really? Another yeah. 100K. Lil Zan would go on to state that the event postponed his purchase of the G Wagon. Do you feel like you learned your Another 100k, but it's, he's saying it like it's not much to him, bro. 100k though, sheesh. Last time about that, my manager said that it, pers it postponed my uh, me getting a G wagon. So. <laughs> <laughs> bro, look at the cat. Oh, that's awesome, cat man. I want, I want, to, I want the cat to appear on the stream again. I was love for his or his interviews, bro. We need the cat back. <sighs> Which could also be interpreted as, over the long run, he was now $100,000 further from owning the car outright. They sent him a bill for 100 racks. And then I remember having a conversation with him after that. He's gonna be, he's like, damn, bro, like, now nah, it's going to take me so much longer to pay this G-Wagon off. Another rapper who owned one of these cars was Mac Miller, who happened to be Little Zan's biggest... R.I.P. Mac Miller, man. We miss Mac. Inspiration in the beginning. Who's like your biggest inspiration <laughs> in terms of rapping? Uh, uh, Mac Miller, yeah. Mac Miller, he's, he's sick, right? Yeah, like he's like a big inspiration. Like, However, when Mac would unfortunately die only nine months later, this also seemed to have an effect on Little Zan's desire to make music. I'd be like legit crying like in my crib like this ain't true, bro. Like Mac did not overdose, Mac still. I wonder if they met. Do you think they might have been friends here, guys? A lot of Mac's still here. I just saw Mac two weeks ago. When your hero dies, I don't want to make music no more. Bro, I was, I was legit pretty depressed about the death as well, man. He made such good music. Like, he was, like, the reason I made music. In this same interview, Little Zan would also talk extensively about his desire to quit music and simply become a public figure. So that's why I'm not doing music, like, after I finished my contract with Columbia. I didn't know what I was signing up for. I'm more of a, a, a celebrity than a, than a rapper at this point, so that's why I'm quitting rapping. And at the end of the day, if he's not enjoying music, the tracks that he does put out won't have the required level of effort in order to compete with other artists who are giving it their all. Lil Xan's attempt to leave music and rather become a celebrity slash public figure didn't really work either. After an explosive year on Instagram in 2018, his growth would slow dramatically and has been in continual decline for the last 25 months. I think he's either losing or gaining like a few followers. Leading to an- I hope I don't hit like a freaking- a uh, down that's a down bad moment guys like he needs to drop a like a good song what happened man instagram live stream in december 2021 in which little zan would show that all of his poor decisions from the past were clearly coming back to haunt him the industry just doesn't care they just want you to pump out hit records and when you're useless to them just leave you in the dirt you know. In this video, Little Zan would blame his sober, business-minded manager, Stat Quo, for fueling his drug addiction after he'd supplied Little Zan with drugs while on tour so he could go out and perform. And my manager was supplying me with the drugs. He knew all my plugs, so if I couldn't perform because I was withdrawing back then, because yes, I used to be a drug addict, you know, he would call, make calls, send $5,000 out here, $5,000 out here just to ship the drugs to wherever we're at in the world. This was just another example of Little Zan's victim complex and lack of personal responsibility. Dang, bro, he needs that much and, and oh my gosh. So what's he do? He decides, oh, I'm going to go on my Instagram story. I'm going to blame my drug addiction on stat quo. It's completely disingenuous. He needed to rely on his manager who doesn't even do drugs 
to get him drugs. Does this make sense to anybody? No. At a certain point, you just have to accept that like your problems are your own and then you can't yeah. just run around playing the victim. After many accused Lil Xan of snitching on his manager, despite he being the one with the drug addiction, Lil Xan would respond by stating that you can't snitch if you're not a gang member. Oh, you're a snitch now, bro. He didn't make you do that. All this stuff. Like, bro, how am I a snitch? Did I go? Academics, academics said, when are you gonna get on the podcast, bro? He's trying to get uh, Zan on the podcast. Go to court and rat on my gang? I don't have a gang. You're not as, you can't snitch if you're not a gang member, bro. Miss me with that. I'm trying to help other artists in particularly my same similar situation. In the Instagram live stream, Lil Xan would also reveal that his manager had taken the G-Wagon from him as Lil Xan still owed $30,000 on it, which Lil Xan would state was unreasonable as he had paid for the majority of it. Also, he took my car away too that I uh, that I paid the majority of the money and now he wants $30,000 of the remaining money to pay it off, which I paid literally, it's all my money in the car and he won't give it to me. Without $30,000 to take full ownership of his G-Wagon, a declining follower count across each of his social media platforms, and no new music in over seven months, it seems like this could possibly be the end for Little Z. Dang, you, you, you definitely, uh, you know, just putting out, out less work, bro. He's just chilling, it seems. But yeah, guys, that's gonna be the video. Peace out. Yeah, he's, he's not doing that much. Not doing that much like music videos. He needs to do, I think, more, guys. Like. He, other content creators, they put out so many music videos. He doesn't really put out that much. But he said he, he kind of lost the passion, I think, here, guys, with the music. It, it seems. The rapper got a $20 and freak tattoo. I haven't seen that one. But, yeah, guys. Peace out, everyone. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next video. Later, guys.